Well, praise God. Isn't God great? He is worthy to be praised, especially among his family. As brothers and sisters in Christ, if we can't praise the name of Jesus, then who can? You know? We have every privilege to know Jesus and to be able to praise his name. I, I encourage you to turn in your Bibles, if you would, please, to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We are continuing through the book of Ephesians. And last week we talked about uh, my part in the puzzle. We're going to continue with that same thought. What is my part in the puzzle? Last week we talked about the puzzle consisting of many pieces but being one puzzle. Remember? And we talked about how there was one body, one spirit, one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all and in all and through all. We talked about one, right? But now I want us to divert a little bit. We're no less one when we begin to look at the total puzzle, the one puzzle, and see each piece. You see, God is designed for each of us to be a piece of his puzzle. Uh, the puzzle that represents Fellowship of the Rockies, or the puzzle that represents the church in Rifle, which could be other evangelical, Jesus-believing folks who are brothers and sisters with us. But we are a part of that puzzle. And, and we are privileged to be a part of that. Howard Hendricks uh, tells a story about a time he had to be away from his family for a couple of weeks. And his little girl was so excited to have him come home. And, and she said uh, at the airport, Daddy, I can't wait till you get home and see how much I growed. <laughs> and so he, he w went home with her, and she was still excited. And she said, Daddy, come on, come on, let's go. And she went over to the door where they marked her growth. He said that if she grew at all, it was a few millimeters. <laughs> but he put a mark just a little higher than the last one. She was jumping up and down and saying, look, Daddy, how much I growed, how much I growed. And he said, yes, honey, that, that's true. You're just getting bigger and bigger. She got kind of thoughtful for a moment, and she said, Daddy, why do big people stop growing? He said, well, they really don't start grow, stop growing. They quit growing up, and they start growing out. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a nice dresser, but their middle drawer is sticking out. <laughs> I've heard it called a furniture disease, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, honestly, folks, we're never to stop growing, are we? When it comes to our knowledge and our faith in the Lord Jesus, we are to keep growing and growing and growing. And the purpose of our church here is not just to grow in the number of people who come to know Jesus, like this outstanding young couple this morning. The, the purpose of our church is to also grow deeper and deeper in our faith and our knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We're supposed to grow broader and deeper at the same time. Uh, and so that's what this passage relates to. It relates to how uh, God has given us a purpose so that we can grow in the giftedness that God has given to us and we can grow also in the purpose that God gives that giftedness for in the church as well. So let's, if you would please, please stand in honor of God's word as we read Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. After all those ones, uh, Paul says, Now, but to each of us, each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he left captive a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. Now this expression, he ascended, what does it mean except that he had descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is himself also he who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there, by waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. 
But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects unto him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by that which every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that we find there. Lord, I pray that each of us would see our part in this wonderful picture that you're putting together in Rifle. Lord, that you would help us to see how you are leading us and guiding us, how you are gifting us uh, to participate together in, in this wonderful endeavor to make a beautiful picture to make a beautiful representation of your love, your grace, and your knowledge here in this community. Father, I thank you uh, for being with us this morning. I pray, Lord, your special provision for the team that's coming this way, driving all day today. Lord, we just pray that you would bless them with your presence and keep them safe on the highway. Lord, that you would bring them to us safely. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. My son, uh, oh, the team has made it uh, halfway. Uh, they are at this time getting ready to leave. Is it about 11 o'clock? I forgot my watch. Oh, okay. It's already that late? <laughs> oh, we're going to be here late, folks. I hope you brought your lunch. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I talked to them. They were, they were halfway. They were uh, stopping at a church in Jerome. They're going to spend the night there, and then they were going to lead the worship there uh, and lead the, the message there uh, the following day, uh, today, this morning. Uh, they were going to leave there about 11 o'clock, so they're probably on the road right now, head to this direction. If you're housing one of them, as Dave mentioned, uh, they should be here uh, around 10 or 11. <laughs> Or 12. <laughs> uh, it just depends. Uh, if my son-in-law, well, never mind, I won't say that. <laughs> it depends on who's setting the pace. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's pretty cool that a group of Christians can come from all the way in Oregon, come to this body here in Rifle, and when they get here, you're going to recognize them as your brother and your sister. God has a lot of folks around the world, doesn't he? Who love him and who know him and who are serving him. A lot of folks that are part of this one big picture of Christians around the world. But our little part of that picture is right here in Rifle, Colorado. Right here, if you're a part of this church, right here in this particular congregation. I'm asking you, how can you be a part of that puzzle? What is your part in that puzzle? What is it that God has gifted you with? What is it that you individually can contribute to the overall picture of God's love in this community, in this church? What is your part? I, I want us to see that there are many pieces that are part of a puzzle. Now, we talked about this last week. Uh, a puzzle uh, without a piece usually ends up in the trash, right? <laughs> now, that's not true with a church. <laughs> but a puzzle without a piece is not as strong as a puzzle with all the pieces. Because all the pieces are meant to interlock together. And when they're all interlocked together, you can pick, even pick the puzzle up and put it on the wall, can't you? Because it holds together. Because one piece holds on to the piece adjoining it uh, over and over and over again. You know, I think that's what God has for us to do as well, isn't it? He has for us to be that piece that interlocks with other pieces around us. This passage says, to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of, of Christ's gift. Uh, I want you to note some things about Christ's gifts to you. First of all, Christ's gifts are given to us by Christ. He has descended to the earth to show us God in human form. His captives are the devil and, and death and the curse and sin. And then he ascended back into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to have the authority to be able then to give us blessings and gifts. And here it says that he has given us 
gifts. A spiritual gift is an ability to serve God and our fellow Christians in such a way that Christ is glorified and believers are edified or believers are built up. Gifts are not toys to play with, uh, but they are tools to build with. God is trying to build his body, trying to build his church. And he has given us gifts, not just so we can enjoy ourselves doing something. I, wasn't that the band wonderful this morning? Amen. You know, I believe that the band really loves the Lord, don't you? Amen. I believe God has gifted them with some talents and some abilities. Uh, it goes far beyond just the uh, talents that they have. It goes into their heart and their ability to lead us in worship and to lead us to the throne of God. Uh, that ability is a gift from God. That ability. Now, if they just use that ability to glorify themselves, if they sit up there and they play beautifully on the, on the piano or beautifully on the guitar or, or sang beautifully with their voice and it was all about them, then they would be using God's gift as a toy, not as a tool, right? But we are given God's gifts for the purpose of building up the body of Christ and glorifying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, there's some things about this gifts that I think we can learn as well. Some lessons to learn. One of those lessons is that God has given to each of us gifts. Nobody's left out. When you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God revealed a gift in you that is unique to you. God has given each of us gifts. Sometimes we are given...